I'm just barely gonna take my little paintbrush and just kind of brush off any loose stuff that may be inside. All right, I'm just gonna coat the cuff and I am gonna give it a, a good coat. I wanna make sure, and down especially, if you're using the built and you have that um, seam at the bottom, I wanna make sure that you get a good bit of paint in there, I mean a good bit of the Mod Podge in there. And if you feel like it's drying out or you don't have enough, I tell you, it's much better to have too much than not enough. Because air pockets form. The snakeskin does a lot like epoxy. When you, once it starts drying, the air that was up underneath the shed starts kind of pulling together. And so all these little micro bubbles start turning into a bigger bubble. So the, for the, you know, however long it's drying, you have to go back every six, seven hours, just check it and make sure that the air pockets get moved to the edge, to the seam. And you can see how it really stretches out once it gets wet. So you've got a lot more room to work with um, you know, if you have a small piece, don't worry about it because it will stretch a good little bit. It doesn't show when you overlap it, unlike fabric. So if you do end up overlapping a little bit, it's okay. It, it, you really have to look hard to see it. As clumsy as I am in the craft room, it's a good thing this skin is so durable. Add a little bit more Mod Podge just so I'm over the top of the skin. When I go to remove air bubbles, I found out that not only can you move them down for a day or two, you can actually kind of move them and they'll come up under this area and slide out through that little, through the seam there. And I'm not worrying about getting all the bubbles out and, and this is why. Um, the Mod Podge is still really tacky. It, it's so tacky that no matter how much of the air pockets and the bubbles you get out, you're going to get more in there, and the Mod Podge is not going to lay down. It's too tacky. So after about two hours, three hours, I'll go back and I will move more of the air pockets down. As it starts firming up a little bit, it's much, much easier to work with. You don't have to worry about then tearing your shed um, when you're pressing on these air pockets. And all you're going to do is the same thing. I just come in and when I find one and just start rolling it either toward the top or toward the bottom or toward that seam. One or the other. Just so long as you're getting it out. But like I said, you got 24 hours to go back and, and keep getting the additional air pockets out. Now, I'm just going to go around the bottom and cut. It doesn't have to be perfect, but what I'm doing is edging my scissors toward the inside because this shed is going, it's going to stretch more when I start working with it. So I can pull it up or I can push it down. I 
When I did the bottom, I beveled inward. This time, I'm going to bevel down toward the outside. So that's it. In the next 48 hours, I'll just keep coming in and working the excess glue. Not too worried about the glue. I just don't want any puddling. I'll take out the air pockets, anything I see of that nature. And you can see kind of the glue and a little bit of air pockets. But you'll think all the air pockets are gone and you'll come back and a couple hours later and you'll see a big air pocket. And you're like, how'd that get there?